This is part three of the baptism of fire. We need to understand that nobody can sidestep the cross and respect or expect that they will reign with Christ. The scripture is crystal clear in Romans 8 verse 17, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. And also in 2 Timothy 2 verse 11 and 12, for if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. So his conditions here. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Do not become like the Roman soldiers who gambled at the foot of the cross for the robe of righteousness. He must go through the cross to be enthroned in the righteousness of God. And this is the righteousness of sonship brought out into us through the, the, the discipline of the Father. It's not the righteousness that's afforded by the blood of Jesus because we are justified by grace through his propitiation and by his blood into the level of salvation. But then we are called to mature through the discipline of the Father answering the upward call of God in Christ. And this is the, the same cleansing, the baptism of fire of, of the, that David writes by the spirit of prophecy in Psalm 24, who may ascend into the mountain of God? who may stand in the tabernacle of the Holy One. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. And who of us can say that? Like Jeremiah that writes, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And I, the Lord, searches the heart and the reins to give every man according to what he deserves. He's judging us according to our works. And this is why the bride goes through a cleansing with him after that we are born again into the level of salvation to stand with god or to be brought into that place where we can stand without spot or wrinkle with a purified heart and this purified heart, heart this inward transformation to the ministry of the cross is beautifully explained in ezekiel 36 verse 23 where the lord speaks the it's a promise <laughs> It's called the inward transformation of the covenant of grace. The law of Moses was outward restraint written on. tablets of stone, but the inward covenant is written by the hand of God or the finger of God, by the spirit of God on human heart, which means he transforms our hearts and minds to the power of his truth to bring us into agreement with himself. And I'm Until we reflect, we feed off him, the hidden manna, the manna from heaven, until the life of Christ becomes evident and manifest in us, until we mature, until that measure of the full stature of Christ that we read about in Ephesians chapter 4. So we are called to grow up to produce the fruits of righteousness. And it comes through this cleansing. And this cleansing and baptism of fire is also the discipline that um, Hebrews talks about. Hebrews.
12, we all that earthly father did discipline us for our good and we respected him for that. For that. How much more must we respect the father of our spirits and live? He disciplined us so that we machine his holiness. No discipline is seen.